Now entering Nerdist.com. Jackie Cation, Laurie Kilmartin. Jackie Cation, Laurie Kilmartin. It's the Jackie and Laurie Show. The Jackie and Laurie Show. It's the Jackie and Laurie Show. The Jackie and Laurie Show. Okay, start what? again. Yeah. Well, you know what? <laughs> I said my name. You said your name. Kyle wasn't recording. Let these motherfuckers figure out. <laughs> figure it out. Is. Look it up. Look it up, asshats. No. So, Kill Martin, you just got off stage. I did. Sorry. We were going to start at 1030. Yeah, First we were. of all, I'm sorry, and I hate you. Me? Wait, what how did I what happened to me? How did well, I get I'm dragged into this? Because we were gonna we we're gonna we were gonna tape one podcast at ten thirty. Right. And then I got a text from you a couple days ago. Saying, saying that I'm we, so on the road that we, we have to do two. And I said, I don't want to do two. But here we go. Here we go. So this I'm, one, I'm a little more it? angry at you than, than, <laughs> than sad yourself? that I... <laughs> You're a little more... Gee, <laughs> shocking. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's awesome. Okay. I, uh, I have been wandering around this fucking town all day long in my stupid car. What are you doing? Uh, what were you well, doing? I thought Dorks I had a voiceover. And... Okay. And uh, it's tomorrow. And oh. so I showed up, and then I was on the side of the hill, and I was like, "Well, I need a haircut." So I your, called your my... hair looks adorable. It really oh, does look you. good. Oh, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Well, and uh, and he couldn't do it until five thirty. So I was on this side of the hill. Mm-hmm. So I drove back. It was a great story, you guys. I drove back to the fucking valley, and then I had to leave at four thirty so I could get over to West Hollywood by five thirty. And I have been wandering around Hollywood, West Hollywood. You're unmoored. I am unmoored. So I I went early to the big. Um, to the Virgil, mm-hmm. to Big Money. Uh, to, to what? See, to Big Money, you know, oh, uh, yeah, Brian yeah. Cooks. Because it said that the show started at 7.30, and then I was supposed to meet somebody at 8 for dinner. Mm-hmm. And um, it didn't start at 7.30. It started at 8. Who did you meet for dinner? Uh, my friend Ellen. You don't know her. She's a non-comic. Yeah, that's right. I know Ugh. people that aren't. <laughs> Unnecessary friendship. <laughs> Veto. Don't waste your time with no, them. Uh, she's all right. She's an actress. Is that something? Does that help? <laughs> Does that right. help at all? Hey, how, uh, you did you get to see Mary Mac on uh, yes, Conan? Yes, I watched. I she it was lovely. She taped Conan last night. Yeah, and we had a writers' meeting during the taping of the show. So you so couldn't you see it live, it, but I watched it. Today. Oh my god, I loved when it she got really the applause fun. break. Yeah. and she just it's said. Just, that was the worst applause break of of this show yeah. ever. And then they had to they rose to the occasion. The audience brought it up enough. Yeah, that was really good. It mm-hmm. was really good. It was fun to watch. It was fun to I watch. I love the chastising on national television. Yeah, <laughs> good for you, Mary Mac. <laughs> and uh, so, so I ended up uh, missing my friend anyway. And so then I turned. So I spent See, fucking, twenty minutes. A comic would have met you. You know, you, well, these fucking civilians don't understand. I, I you bailed have a on her. Little as window well. of time yeah. between spots. Nine hours, and it was. <laughs> so I turned around and I drove back to the Virgil, and I got to close it. Oh, that's so cool. So good for me. I got to work on my new bits. That's good. Did you get to work on your? I saw you last night at Flappers. You were great. Thank you. You were so it's funny. Some newer stuff. Yeah, but it, it all feels like. Um, like little jokes, but they don't feel part of something larger yet. Yeah. You know, and it's so I'm having trouble. Like, I, I have a couple little chunks that are newish. Yeah. And now I'm inserting new jokes in them, and now my chunks are all broken up again. And, I, and I'm like, what's the order? And I'll do a joke, and I'll be like, fuck, I know I have a new one here now instead of this one. And mm-hmm. so the sets, it's all kind of bumpy. That's how it feels right now. Yeah. But but I I think those those smaller jokes are really popping. Thank you. And I think it I think uh, it'll it'll bigger chunks will come out of it. Yeah, they're hopefully. Just, they're just little. <laughs> they're really smart little jokes in the middle of. You're like, oh, she, she's working on. Oh no, that's I've never heard that joke before. So oh, that cool. was Yeah, it was great. Well, oh okay. So today, yeah, today ha- uh, I had I I don't know how I'm going to be able to talk for two hours. First Me of neither. All. <laughs> I'm, well, I don't I'm have with it you. in me. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you have to go to Malibu? Yes, I, I I had a show in Malibu, and why? I, I don't know why? why I think Malibu's closer than it is. I, I think don't... because Carson Johnny Carson used to live out there, and he worked in Burbank. Burbank. So I'm like, oh, I guess that's doable. Why would that guy be in a, a traffic <laughs> would... for four hours a day? <laughs> why didn't that guy have a driver? Oh, he did. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I drove out to Malibu and did a, okay. I did a set and uh, at the. Uh, Fielding Edlow had a, had a, has a show. Oh, okay, she's great. I really love her. Yes. But, um, so in there's it's like a, a like a 
Playhouse. There's, it's, oh, I've it's done like that. A, it's like a half, cr- you know, Was moon. Fe- Is Fielding Edlow running that now? This one, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, good, good. So, um, it's a nice space. It's a nice space. And there's people sitting. And then the front row is empty except for one woman mm-hmm. who is writing in a notebook the entire time on stage. Wow. And I, and I go, what are you doing? She's like, I'm a reporter. So, um, No, you aren't. First of all, yeah. no. first of all, you're part of the story now because yeah. you're sitting in the front row and you're writing every joke. I say, I watch you write it down. And I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Yeah. I don't like someone writing down my jokes. Uh, no, you know, no, that's fine. If it's there, it's in, uh, and a televised appearance. Cause then it's officially out. I don't want you writing them down mm-hmm. and pu- publishing them in your and little you gazette. Were, guess, guess what? If you were really a reporter, you would know to sit in the back of the room. You weirdo Magoo. Yes. Yeah. And then out of her damn mind. And then, uh, the, the, like that bugged me. And then there's jokes that she wouldn't write down. I'm like, <laughs> that's a fucking perfect joke. And it's four words. It's perfect for print. You dumb bitch. You fucking write that one down. <laughs> I enjoy that. I enjoy that. It's uh sorry you didn't. My favorite thing that happened. <laughs> yes, well, I I did Largo last night. I I I was Tom Papa and Friends. Yeah. And you told me about that show last night. It sounded like a really fun one. It was a fun show, but I did uh my surgery joke. Yeah. And I forgot the second half of it, and mm-hmm. I was staring at the 350 people that I genuinely called a pile of haircuts. 350? Because, yeah. Wow. Because it was lot. full, right? It was it was sold out on a and, Tuesday. That's uh, amazing. Yeah, Wednesday, I think actually. But um, yeah, right. Sorry. Whatever it was, but I because I got mad at myself. <laughs> I got mad at them. Yeah. Classic comic reaction. Yeah. And because uh, I couldn't remember the second half of the surgery joke, so I just stood there and I was like. Huh, interesting. I don't know what the, where the rest of that joke went. And they just kind of stared at me, and I was like, fucking pile of haircuts. You could take it. And then I just, <laughs> went, I just went into... And then at the end of my set, I was like, we'll never know. We'll never know what the second half of that joke was. You fucking take my silence. <laughs> you take, take it. You take the fact that I'm clearly not as well prepared as I, as I thought I was. I was, so, I was irritated with that set a little bit. I liked it, but it wasn't great. And, you know, I'm used to... A certain amount of doing very well right now. Yes, right. that when I don't do well, right. this is a, the most egotistical thing. No, but you're it's, uh, you're you you're it's going it's a well. Standard of luxury that you're uh, right, afforded. It's, it's, <laughs> as, as, <laughs> you're a, a grand dame, a dowager queen, and uh, you yes. are allowed to expect yes. to do reasonably well almost all the time. And I did do reasonably well. Uh, yeah. I, I was okay with it. My favorite thing that happened: I talked to a booker yesterday. Uh, this was uh, when I was reminded that there is no pride. There is yeah. no, uh, there's, right. there, you don't get to get mad at the booker. And so I'm talking to this booker and uh, I was like, hey, you know, I've been trying to get into your club. And um, he goes, you know, the, you know, the owner knows you. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And he said, and I, I know that he knows that you're competent. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I was like, stop oh hitting God. me. <laughs> and I... And I almost said something. I was like, "Hey, out loud!" You said that out loud, <laughs> but I didn't say that. Instead, I just um, oh. I was I was reminded. Oh, that's right. I I'm a comic. I'm not allowed any pride. <laughs> I'm not allowed to get mad. And I said, "Does he? Does he know?" And uh, well, I gotta go. That's how I dealt with that. And I said, "Well, keep keep plugging." Fuck. Keep, and it's fine. It's I have a lot of work right now, but. You know, you got to find work for the when you don't have work. That's where I spend my time going. Yeah. What about next January? What's going to happen? Isn't it weird when when like the the recession hit in 2008 and people I mean, I understand why this would be traumatizing to people that have had a regular job where it's like, no, you have to hustle and find something. It's like that's what comics do every day day one. Every day you are a. if you're a road comic, you're mm-hmm. employed one week at a time. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And if, and if, and early on, some of the clubs will close. Yeah. I remember, and I, I've never had this happen where the club closed. And so weeks would get, get canceled. Right. And then, or you'd get there. This would happen occasionally on one nighters. I don't remember any specific examples, but I know it must have happened to me where I didn't get paid or I got underpaid or there was just some sort of where I had to go. No, you said the gig was a hundred dollars and you just handed me seventy five. That was oh, I remember the dirt bag in on Brady Street in Milwaukee. Uh, Twenty years ago, he doesn't own it anymore, but he used to pay us with a gun on the table. Oh, I heard about that guy. Yeah, that guy's out of his. Was his name Jay? Jay 
P? J, yeah. J, J it was, R. It, yeah, it was like J. J R or something. Yeah. Whatever it was, it was, and it would, he was hilariously, it would be pointed at you. You'd be sitting across from oh my the desk. God. And it was, he would just, you'd take it out of the drawer, put it on the table, and then he'd hand you your money. And it would always be short. And so, like, I was featuring for Fred Klett. K L E T T, very funny guy. That's probably familiar. that sounds familiar. I, I think he does cruises now. Okay. Anyway, um, how many of our friends have we lost to cruises? <laughs> our good friends. Good friends gone now. You don't see them. You don't see them anymore. They're riding helicopters. And, and, <laughs> and, 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 and I guess like something about cruises makes you never want to be in a club again. You know, like they they almost never pop up. They're they they're traumatized by. Whatever you uh, have to do on a cruise. Whatever is happening on a cruise. Have you ever done a cruise? No, I haven't. Uh, I want to. You. Just Why? to try it. Just okay. to try it once. Okay. And I hear there's there's cruise Perks. gigs that are better than they used to be. Yes. You now know, there's that, clubs on cruises. Yeah, there's supposedly. clubs. And you can yeah. talk like a grown up and stuff. Right. But. And there, it's an adult thing. Anyway, so the guy gives me, uh, I, was, I was supposed to make $200 and he gave me $150. And I said, uh, it was supposed to be $200. And he said, and there was this long pause, like an asshole. And then he goes, do you think you deserve $200? Oh, my God. And I said, yeah. Yeah, that was the agreement. And him and his stupid gun. And I'm like, shoot me. Shoot me now. End this right now over he $50. He should have shot you. He should have it ended. just sort of. You I, wouldn't have to be at this podcast right now. <laughs> Imagine being dead. Wow. Minute four, Hovering you guys. Over this podcast. <laughs> Minute four. <laughs> and I just I just came from Colorado and Oklahoma. Yes. With Maria Bamford, and yeah. it was a, a beautiful experience, as you yeah. can imagine. And uh, we wrote the dirtiest punchline at the end of my tantric sex bit. Cool. It is now. No longer safe for television. You can't do it on TV. <laughs> Except for that's heartbreaking. It is because you don't want to get too used to it. Right. Sometimes I mean, you're talking about tantric sex. You know, sometimes you can't keep it clean necessarily. Right. And I don't know that anybody would have thought that was clean enough for television anyway. Yeah, but maybe not. I don't know. I thought it. I thought it danced nicely around uh, all the that things. edge. You know. <clears throat> well, but, I will say that. I have about six filthy jokes yeah. that I've written over the course of 25 years, 30 years, right? And um, they're all hard to do initially, and then I get used to it. But the it's always a sign that I'm in a pretty good mood, comedically, yeah. when I write a dirty joke. Because I don't have that many dirty jokes. So I don't either. That's the good news. Um, yeah, I did that show in Malibu, and then I drove another hour out here and just did a, a set downstairs. It was Dana Gould's show? Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah. Um, Carmen Lynch great. is downstairs. Oh, nice. I saw Ian uh, Harvey, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. That's a, that's it's a nice it's lineup. A, it's, a good, it's a good packed little day for me. Oh, um, <laughs> so uh, they announced the special Yes, okay. that's right. You, it's uh, December. Yes, it's official. It's it's streaming on CISO, right? CISO dot com, and they're doing like a whole, uh, I guess, fall of comedy, stand up comedy. Like Doug Stanhope special is on CISO, and, right? Uh, Jenna Friedman had uh, a show at Edinburgh called American Cunt. That's okay, <laughs> <laughs> catchy, CISO, catchy. I love it. <laughs> um, and then mine is uh, debuting December 29th, which I think is. Perfect because you'll have visited your family, yeah, and you, you'll either uh, want It'll them to be die after Christmas, yeah. or you'll realize, oh, they're dying. They're, they're dying. I need yes. to. I and need so this, to love them. This is preemptive. This will get right. You. Yeah, or they're dead. It's or the or they've died. and you'll feel very depressed, and you'll be depressed or relieved. Yeah, but it's called Forty Five Jokes About My Dead Dad, and, and it's going to be on CISO. It's on CISO, and I, I think with CISO. Um, you can get the first week free. So if yeah. you want to be a total cheapskate, you can wait till December 29th to get it. And then it. watch everything. But then you can also, um, you can watch it on Amazon. Like if you have an Amazon Fire Stick, they're, they, have, oh. they're, they have some sort of symbiotic relationship with, with Amazon. CISO? Yeah. Oh, wow. So if you, you still have to get a CISO membership, but you can watch it on your Fire Stick. Okay. Um, you'll be hearing that a lot. <laughs> right, uh, you'll be hearing through. that in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna really make my pitch concise. Why not? What the hell? It's, but it, it's weird. Like it, it, it feels good. Yeah, to have sold it and for it to go up. Yeah, and just, yeah. You know, oh, it's real. Like, like you know, I, I didn't want to say anything until it was like, you know, yes. they, they put out a press release, you know, and like, yeah, this is happening. 
Right. They thought, you know, it's cool. It is really cool. It does feel good. It's Well, that's, I mean, it was a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And it was emotionally, like, the hardest thing, I think, probably. Yeah. It felt. I mean, the whole the whole Twitter feed when your father was was passing was mm-hmm. so heartbreakingly funny mm-hmm. that for you then after he passed away, for you to spend another six months writing those jokes down mm-hmm. and culling through them and making sure and then trying them every night. Yeah. Was it. Did you feel like it was work at any time or did you. Was it, it felt like a mission. I felt okay. like I had to do it. And um and get it no done. matter what, no get matter it out what, there. how it's sold. Yeah, I was, you know, going to put it on Vimeo or whatever, you mm-hmm. know, just to get it out there. But um, it was, and it's been a long time. It's been almost two years since I shot it. Yeah, and so it, it'll be like two years and two months since I shot it is when it'll be available. So right. that's a long time to wait, you know, because you. Yeah, and there's a couple people. <laughs> there's a couple celebrity references. Yeah, because I, I, I was just trying to throw every possible kind of joke at. Death and cancer yes. and grief, right? So there's some like hacky fucking shit in there, yeah. and there's some monologue type jokes in there, and mm-hmm. then there's like real, real. It's just like it, every possible thing it's, I could think of. It's a tour of different kinds of jokes. It really is. It might be a master's class <laughs> on how to write jokes. <laughs> All I'm saying is, it, there's a Larry King joke in there, and please let him live until December 29th. <laughs> That's all I need. Uh, it's fine. He's a uh... He's he's got he's got time. I'm still listening to that fucking Norman Lear. Oh my god! <laughs> right? It's How long very, is his book? It's 15, 16 hours. Wow! I'm on the last hour. You need like wine road gig up, up to the Bay Area. Yeah, exactly. I do that Napa gig. I did. Oh right, right. No, I'm not. Doing that. <laughs> I'm not staying in Fairfield <laughs> and then driving to Napa. I have my own weird uh, one nighter run that I'm doing that first week of December. Yeah, where I'm also in the in my what is what was sold to me as a Bay Area run. Yeah, I'm going to Arcata. <laughs> Arcata is it's four hours in Oregon. Right, it's four hours north it's, of it's the right Bay Area. near Eureka. Yeah, um, so, that's so funny. Yeah, me and Dash Kwiatkowski are gonna just road trip up there. We get we have, there's it'll a room. be awesome. It'll be awesome. It'll be yeah. super. Arcata is beautiful too. It's right on the coast. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I'm and really it's a really old. It. It's an old California town. It's old Victorians and stuff. It's like okay. one of the early California towns. Well, oh, that'll be it's neat really then. cool. Oh, that'll be fantastic. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I'll tell you, Oklahoma. Here's my favorite thing that happened in Oklahoma. You were just in Oklahoma. Yeah, I was in Oklahoma City with uh, Maria. With Maria. Where? Where? Uh, it was Edmond, Oklahoma. It's right outside of Oklahoma oh, City. There's a lot of gymnasts out out of Edmond, Oklahoma. Well, they're a bendy people. They're trying to they're, they're trying to rock with they're trying the, to flip out of Oklahoma. The, well, they're, they're rocking with the earthquakes. Uh, they had oh, a five point eight. Wow, they had a five point eight. That's real. That's yeah. a real earthquake. That's bu- bullshit. Yeah. Is what I thought that was. That's man made. Yeah, it's a man made earthquake. Yeah, congratulations. And um, but the. Everybody kept saying to me, have a blessed day. It was a blessed day or a blessed day. Wow. And the amount of baptism, right? Like the Baptist yeah. church uh, infusion, more syllables. But it reminded me, do you remember this? I was going to ask you this because you were there in the 80s uh, yes. when have a nice day was invented. Remember when have a nice day was invented in the 80s? It, I don't remember that it was invented. It I was, remember as a t-shirt with a happy face, right? Yeah, but it was it was everyone started saying it in the late 80s and I remember a lot of comics doing jokes about it. Oh. And how it was it was such a it was like why why don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me to have a nice day. That, that seems like it's a a Minnesota trend because I don't remember San Francisco comics complaining you, about people saying have say, a nice day. Yeah, <laughs> very possible. It could have been a Midwestern moment when everybody, yeah. and then it finally bled out to the coasts. You people on the coast, we we get your we get your bullshit. See, we're sending you. I don't know what we're sending you. Um, isn't it weird? Uh, like Oklahoma um, is very Republican. Yeah, they, they probably don't meet any Hillary supporters, you know, or um, very few. They're very... Well, the no, Maria Bamford audience, chock course. full. Oh, yeah. Chock full yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. That must have been so grateful you guys came. It, they were psyched. They yeah. were psyched and they were they were supportive and they were... And they were mostly sane. And the more... You know, the... And now that I'm traveling around a bunch, Colorado's pretty conservative, too, because the, the run was weird. It was, yeah. a, it was a... I think it was a Thursday in Oklahoma City, Friday in... Denver and Saturday in Fort Collins. 
Fort Collins is supposed to be like a comedy scene on the rise. That's what I've heard. Really? Well, it was, I mean, <laughs> Jeez. it was fine. There was, I mean, all three shows were, they were all Bamford fans. Yeah. So it was just, it was just, and, and it was hilarious because she did some meet and greets. Yeah. Uh, couldn't do it in Denver. The room was too big. It was yeah. like almost 2000. Oh my God. And she sold it out. Fuck. Yeah. Crazyville. Yeah. Wow. And this is from Amazon, right? The Amazon show? Uh, no, from the Netflix show. Oh, sorry. Netflix. Yeah. Show. Yeah. Wow. Lady Dynamite. Yeah. That's that's mm-hmm. awesome. And then, but the meet and greet she did in Oklahoma and in um, in Fort Collins because they were smaller venues. Yeah. And they everybody just lines up to tell them what meds they're taking oh and tell God. them about when they were in the in the Husco, you know, when they were in yeah. the psych ward. And she loves those stories. And she said to me afterwards, she was like, "I, you know, you can't. I mean, I, I you probably don't like those stories." And I was like. Uh, now that I know that you like those stories, I don't care. I, I don't have to hear them. <laughs> I'm just I'm sitting here. I got my phone. I can stare into it. And uh, but it's so, and this weekend we're going to and we we will have already gone. But um, it's Saturday. We're doing Seattle mm-hmm. Paramount Theater, and then oh my God. Uh, Sunday Spokane. Spokane. That's the dream is to be able to sell out a little theater or a medium sized yeah, theater. Yeah, medium sized theater there for a day, and then Sunday night at the Spokane. A comedy club, which is the same people that own the Tacoma Comedy Club. Oh wow! Have you worked with those guys? I have worked at Tacoma. Oh my room, god, yeah. I love that Tacoma room. Yeah, I just it's, fun. it's like uh, they told me that they did a tour of comedy clubs. Yeah, and they looked at the best ones that were run yeah. and how they taught the treated the comic, where the comics like to stay within walking distance yes. of the damn club, please. Right. And then you know the food and beverages were taken care of, and it wasn't too crazy. And Tacoma's only been open like five years. Yeah. And it's one of my favorite clubs in the country now. Yeah. So just because they, they, they did it right from the start. And and Spokane's only been open less than a year. Mm. And what I liked about this gig, I got an email from the guy yesterday, uh, Booker, and he said, so you're coming in with Maria on Sunday. Why don't we get you a headline week so that we can plug it? In Thank front of her you. audience. And yes. I was like, I'm a real girl, too. I, yeah. I'm, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And so, because uh, after the fucking competent uh, comment, <laughs> I was like, oh I need. Oh, God. Yeah. Anyway, that's, uh, that's so. That's exciting. It'll be fun. I wonder. Yeah. You got to get, you got to do would, both those clubs. I would love to be able to do that. I would love to be able to, to have, if, if my special did well. Yeah. And to have enough. Uh, enough of a bump where I could do a what one or two nights of the middle of the week. Yeah, or? no, well, not in the middle of the week because my cause job, but but on Saturday, mm-hmm. just uh, I can fly out. I can fly anywhere every Saturday. Yeah, and do something. You could do it. You could do it and and build the audience. Yeah, like Kyle Kinane did. Like, uh, what do like, you mean, like Kyle Kinane did? He did. He did rock venues. Yeah, he would just go. So and, he would book himself. Yeah, he he made the phone call or somebody else did. No, he did. He, wow. he he would book the and and because I did and plus there's those there's comic run southern runs yeah that have those small sort of music venues yeah and like I did one in Atlanta and it was a Saturday and there was mm, 50 60 people there and I did a dork forest and then I did a stand up show mm-hmm. and it was good it wasn't I didn't make a great deal of money I probably yeah. came home with after doing a five day drive around, I probably came home with five hundred dollars. Which um but I did it because I wanted to meet those people. Yeah. You know, I wanted to do Alabama. Yeah. I wanted yeah. to do Atlanta and, and Charlotte and it was yeah. That sounds fun. It but was that's, that's not an you can't consistently come home with five hundred dollars. No, you can't, but but if you if if the CISO thing goes well, yeah, you could fly and do a one nighter. And then fly back. And if it doesn't work the first time, three months later, you go back mm. and you do it again. And and that's how you build an audience. I, I think it can like, be, it's a lot of work, though. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of it work. It sounds like a third job for you Yay. in your copious amounts of free time <laughs> in between trying to raise a human. <laughs> hey, he's doing better. Is he? His grades Congratu- are uh, uh, satisfactory. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good for you, young man. Well played. Well played. Yeah. I like that new joke about uh, raising him right. Oh, not to be a rapist? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
still finessing that one. Right. Well, that's I, the thing. The great thing about that premise yeah. is that there's so much there. Yeah. That that could be that. As far as I'm concerned, that's a three and a half minute bit. Maybe. Maybe yeah. you're right. It's because what All else right. doesn't he want to be? What else don't you want him to be? You don't want him to be a rapist. But what else? That's do you it. Also- he could murder. I just don't. Rape. How about a banker? Do you want him to be a banker? <laughs> <laughs> like, what is it? Do you oh, want I a see. marine biologist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you? What am I? What will you embarrass? What will you be embarrassed to, to tell? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a, but it's a great premise. I love it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so what do you now? Okay, I'm just thinking ahead to December. I can't stop thinking about it now. Okay, like, what should I do? Should I should I uh, hire a publicist for a month or two? Wow. No. No. I don't know. I mean, you you know you've come to the right person when you want to talk about. <laughs> Industry decisions. <laughs> That's true. It's, uh, we, I don't know how to, I, I actually said to someone today, I could pitch this to you or I could just keep doing stand up comedy forever. Your choice. <laughs> Your choice. <laughs> Whatever. That's and, our first laugh from Kyle. Kyle's God little, damn. Kyle's this been when, is this like when his, shitty? Is this no, a bad podcast? This is, Kyle is exhausted. Okay. Kyle right. is working at least three jobs, and I believe you're making people, aren't you? Aren't you also raising people? No. no. They're just comics. Yeah. He's working with other writers. Yeah. So okay. He's, he's in, he in a writer's room now. I know. So, how do you do it, Lori? He doesn't know how you do it. I had, uh, yesterday, uh, we had a meeting, and I, I had emailed an idea that um nobody responded to so of course i didn't of course i'm like either either i go oh everyone hated i suck or then i'm like oh they didn't see it <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> they must have missed it this is a fucking good one guys so then i i open my mouth to pitch it and then like the words were in my head and the slide that the words need to go down so they get into the pool yeah. was out of order. <laughs> and I was like, ah. And then I, I barely repackaged the email. That every, then I realized, oh, they did see it. And they were unmoved. Their people, eyes are looking down. Oh, she brought it up again. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I like writing monologue jokes. I have to, well, but okay, publicist. so so yeah. So I here's what. Uh, what do I do? I want people to watch it. What oh, do I, I don't do? know. I want. I want. I want people go to Sam French, buy one of those agent lists, and then just send out oh my cards. God. Remember that from the yeah, 90s? yeah, yeah. Anyway, so um, I was thinking of calling or t- contacting a couple of podcasts that yeah. I know and just saying, "Can I?" Can I buy? Yes. Can I buy time? Where oh, you, you just buy say? Ads and I stuff? don't know. I don't know. Do you ask somebody? Say, can you mention me? Can you mention my special? Do you ask? Dork them? Forest people are like, hey, I have a book coming out. Can I come and be on the Dork Forest? Uh, yeah. Hey, I have a podcast festival. I just did one with Graham Elwood because of the LA Podcast right. Festival. So uh, you have to go be on everybody's podcast. Oh God! Or I suppose uh, you could just uh, buy uh, ad uh, space. Uh, yes. <laughs> Yes, you could throw money at it. And, uh, How much do you think Marin charges for his little blurbs up front? Six hundred dollars an episode. Seriously? Yeah, that's what I think he charges. Oh, that's worth it. Oh my god, I All think right. it's worth it. All right, Rob, you tell her. No, I don't. I think uh, why you think people fast forward past that stuff? Yes, yes, I do. I do. A, I think they do fast forward, as does the nodding of Kyle. Oh. And, um, and then hmm. the other thing is, is uh, I think you should just ping Marin and go, "Hey, can I? Have you ever done the show? What? Have you ever done the show? Yeah. Besides the live one? Yeah, I that did. We both yeah. did together. I did it the week before my dad went into hospice. Oh, weird. Yeah. Yeah. And so now it's a follow up. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Because it would be your a last follow- podcast killed my dad. <laughs> and now I'd like to let you know what happened. <laughs> Please email him, though, no, that no. very sentence. Because mm. <laughs> that, I think, could get you. Uh, he, he, you know, I, and you did Never Not Funny. Yeah. Already, yes. he's not going to have you back on, Jimmy. Why don't you just mention it? He might, and yeah, he, he might I just feel mention it. Asking Jimmy to, to right pop up. Who else? Who else? Uh, but but it, is is that the way to do? Just go podcast, or that's what everybody I know does. Yeah, that's the way to do it. That's really? the way to do it. Uh, Chris Hardwick did. I did once ask Chris Hardwick about uh, PR people. Yeah, and 
he this was probably before eight, he had a ten show? years, ten oh, okay. years ago, yeah. eight or ten yeah. years ago, and he said, "I have to tell you that I've never left an office of a PR company uh, having spent twenty thousand dollars." <laughs> And thought to myself, well, that was well spent uh, because it never – it doesn't right. – it makes some difference, but it – I think it's cumulative. So it, I, th- I don't think you can just do it once. Right, 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 right. So I don't know. I would say go be on every Goonie Birds podcast. Mm-hmm. I'll see if I can work you into the dork forest. <laughs> <laughs> Attainable goal. Attainable goal. I just, I just did one. Do you, do, yeah. do you think I should be uh, trying to contact cancer groups, or you know, or, or is that wow. inappropriate? It's not inappropriate. It sounds like what do you? What would? Oh, oh, for pe- what people to watch? Yeah, just watch it. Hey. Hey. My dad died of cancer. I made a bunch of jokes about it. Right, right. Yeah, they might like that. Sure. Hmm. What the heck? That's not a bad idea. That's an excellent idea. I like. Have I you love ever thought it. of going into PR? <laughs> That's an excellent. You should definitely. <laughs> I'd ref. I wouldn't phrase it exactly that. <laughs> right. But I like. I love that Cristela Alonso had made a deal, mm-hmm. and the money she made she took and she shot her own pilot yeah and she got a show in there from that and mm-hmm. i feel like oh if i have if there's any profit mm-hmm. you know maybe i should use it to publicize it a little bit yeah myself or make something else what's the next thing you want to make that's the real question in a my gun head. to put at my temple <laughs> really interesting interesting are you thinking about getting a 3d printer what are you thinking of doing <laughs> yeah <laughs> Because then you can make the bullets. Um, <laughs> yeah, you don't have what's on your plate. What's on, what's in the future? Remember that Maria joke? She's what? like, "Oh, I'm done. I finished early. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting in a gravy boat, having gravy poured I'm over." I'm trying me. to write this little book. You know? Oh, that's right. You got a book. Yeah, you got the book that you got to yeah. write. Yeah. So you have a project. I have a project, but I I I, I, I want. <laughs> I you want had something. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I have a new CD. Wait, wait, I have a CD that yes. I'm working on. So, but, but it's I mean, ex- we yeah. have to, you know, we ha- we're still responsible for getting our stuff out there. Still, you know, and right, right. What was the book? I'm responsible for my own orgasm. Uh, it's, really? Uh, yeah, that was a book. Uh, I only know that because in the bo- in the movie Tootsie, um, oh my god, <laughs> Terry Carr. It's in one of the rants that she does against uh, Dustin Hoffman. Terry Carr, so funny, so funny. MS. She has MS. Did you know that? A little twitchy. I just saw that. I saw her. Really? Yeah. She's got a little shaky. <laughs> I didn't know it was MS. <laughs> Kyle finds me insensitive. You're the, you're uh, the worst person on earth. <laughs> I think. And that's coming from the worst person on earth. <laughs> well, finally, we have a new name for the podcast. <laughs> the two worst people on the planet. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I uh, Speaking of that, um, I was asked to audition for this new show on Showtime about comedy in the 70s. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't do it. I, uh, I, I should have just dropped everything and gone to do it. Yeah. But I had just gotten the sides, and I yeah. didn't want to show up and suck. Yeah. Right. Right. And I was like, "Well, do you think I could do it?" I w- I asked if I could do it this week, and um, they said yes, and then they said no. So, or they, they must have cast it, and yeah. it was I was essentially I was I was to play a woman comic in nineteen seventies two or whatever. Yeah. And it was a, the joke that they had written for it. Not a bad joke. I, c- I couldn't tell if I had heard it before. Like, mm. like that's the biggest problem with stand-up comedy, and I've said this before, is that uh, on television, in in TV and movies, is that no one's willing to give up their A material. Yeah, right, and right. So the joke was funny, but I didn't think it was – I was like, oh, I've heard this done better. Yeah. And it's because no one was willing to give up the, the best yeah. punchline of their lives. And – um but I was reminded, you know, th- this thing's going to come out, and they're going to glorify the comedy store in 1972. Yeah. Where? Who's behind this? Uh, Jim Carrey. Oh, it's that one. Okay. Yeah. Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. Yeah, the, is it I'm dying up here? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, that sounds right. And um, 
Yeah, exactly. I'm just, I'm taking part in my career peripheral. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand what just happened. Well, he knew the name we and I didn't know the name and, and I didn't. She's going up for is she's the only person in the room who oh. doesn't know what didn't it is. know what the thing was. You're going to have to explain a lot to me tonight. <laughs> That's my feeling. This That's my sense where about this are podcast. We at, if I might. We're at 33. 33. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Can we do this? I can't do this. <laughs> I want to go home. It's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, here's my thing though. Is that remember when I when those guys would tell me about what com- the comedy store was like in the early seventies? Yeah, I was like foul, horrible, disgusting. Yeah, the coercion of of just like how much drugs and and it was it was right after the summer of love and everybody was right. still high, but they were just essentially just having orgies and 70s of, were a dark awful time just gross as I, far I, I as i'm concerned there were more like bombings and explosions in the 70s and there's been ever since like right, it, like munich and and um y- yeah and just in america the weathermen and all these you know oh, yeah, yeah. unabomber reactionaries yeah, no he was 90s unabomber bomber was 90s oh, i don't know anything about <laughs> crime i appreciate you trying though you keep throwing <laughs> things out that are decades <laughs> off but what a cheerful <laughs> demeanor you have <laughs> What else can I throw out there? <laughs> Everything I know about true crime, I learned from Michelle McNamara. Ah, uh, yeah, because yeah. because uh, she knew things. Yeah, she knew so much. Yeah, and just <laughs> and so that's all I've got left. It's uh, <laughs> that, and I think Son of may Sam was enough. In may peace. she rest in peace. Yeah. Um. Mm. Oh, so Patton did stand up for the first time in four and a half years. Did, did you, you see, see that? It? I didn't no. get to see it, but I saw uh, that it. I saw that it went well, and that that's cool. and and in months, four and a half months. Was it four and a half months? Yeah. You said years. Didn't she? Yeah, she mm-hmm. said years. Yeah. And I thought it was years. No, months. Months. Four and a half months. Wait, you yeah. seriously thought? That Patton it's... Oswalt hadn't done stand-up comedy in four and a half years? I did. I don't know why I did. Okay. Because I haven't seen him in, f- uh, you know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Let's All right. move forward. It's impossible to There's no story There's, here. Right. <laughs> Move, Move along. Move along. Nothing to see here. Okay. But. So, you know, the last couple podcasts, mm-hmm. we've we've had male comics that we really like say yeah. some horrible things. Oh, yeah. And then it, there's, oh, this, oh, my God, this angst, right? You know, of of funny people that are have oh, the, a horrible streak. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, you know, Roseanne is another feet of clay. example what do you mean? I don't think feet of clay. Yeah, because well, I mean the thing is, is she's really funny, but she, uh, you're talking about the the guys. A, a mess. I'm talking about she's a major Trump supporter, right? She's on she, her goddamn. She mind. just retweets a lot of like really shitty stuff. About I wouldn't Hillary. know. She blocked me. I know. I know. We hear about it every podcast. Show. <laughs> Get over it. But but I still love her. Yeah. You know, but I'm I I think her political views are abhorrent. I've taken to calling anybody who uh, who supports Trump on my Facebook thing Sergeant Schultz, and I'm like, hey, hope you have a good time at the Russian front, <laughs> and because uh, that's, uh, that's uh, Hogan's, Hogan's Heroes, Heroes reference. Yeah, sure, I'll be here all week. Hogan's Heroes. I'll be here all fucking night is what I will be. I'll be totally. <laughs> You're listening to too much Norman Lear. Mm-hmm. Um, Almost possible. Yeah. So I had. Uh, I had I I went to, um so last oh last Friday I was in the worst mood yeah I had two shows and they were they they turned out to be fun both of them but both of them on my drive there there's nobody in the audience you know and this when I'm on stage I'm having a good time right but but you know sometimes you just get in this negative cycle of and you start looking at other comics your age that are doing way the fuck better hmm. and you're like I can't believe it I can't believe it what am I doing I'm, I'm doing free shows for so few people mm-hmm. on a Friday fucking night you know mm-hmm. um, but I meant so I, I'm sitting next to another comic and uh, I, I said something like I, I fucking I hate this business and I want it to end you know which is like <laughs> You know, that's a normal statement. Right. You just, that's like saying you, hello. Right. You would just sat down, probably. Yes. You're like, oh, good that's, to see you. That's us vetting each other. That's, that's our <laughs> small talk as comics is how we want to die. Okay? Yes. And I expect another comic to reciprocate in kind. Mm-hmm. You know, we all have those days all the time. And it could be... Did she offer you a Xanax or something? What happened? What? Who, what would they do? No, they looked at me like... Oh, and then they try to cheer me up. I'm like, no, don't no. fucking try to cheer me up. <laughs> don't whimper at me. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah just uh, just go. Angered ha, me. That made, that, then I felt alone. 
<laughs> oh, that's that actually is the worst. It that, is the worst because you can be in front of any gig where it's there's no people, there's a, there's a ton of people, and you're just scared shitless, and you don't want that feeling, and you're just like, I I don't want to be in this business anymore. I want to die. That's a normal feeling for a comic to have every single night. And the thing is, is it doesn't make any sense because you're already doing the thing that you love. You're just. You, I wish I had blinders, you know, where I couldn't see what other people are doing. And I, what did I, I saw on Snapchat, it was Ron Funches and James Adomian mm -hmm. uh, doing karaoke. Mm -hmm. And I knew that they were partying. Yeah. And I knew, but they looked like they were having such a good time. Well, here's the thing. I don't want to do any of that. Uh, I don't want to yeah. be up at one o'clock in the morning. I don't want to be high or drunk, and I don't want to sing karaoke. So what? What am I jealous of? Right. <laughs> right. What exactly am I Wouldn't seeing? Wouldn't it be nice there? if you wanted to do that stuff? Though? I would love to love to I do those wish things. I love to do all that shit. I'm, I'm I'm not even willing to be willing to do those things. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to stay up. I don't want to. Uh, what I would. What I really want to do is I want to read a book and fall asleep and then get up and go to breakfast. That's my Sounds idea. It's a me, really man. good time. Heaven. It is a lovely, lovely okay. life. So Friday night, I'm in a terrible mood. And mm -hmm. then Saturday. Oh, and then my mom goes into the hospital Friday morning for hip oh, right, surgery. Right, right, right. Right. And I'm, I'm promised a minimum of two weeks in a nursing facility. I know you were. Okay. Right. The doctors promised me this. <laughs> I went and checked one out in Glendale, which is right. far enough away where I, I, you know, right. can you come visit me? Mom, Once it's too far. Oh, okay. Like I could get out of visiting her yeah. everything. Well, fri fri so Friday, so Friday morning, surgery. she has her hip surgery Friday afternoon. Oh, they say I'm doing great. I'm going right home. It's going to pop out, mom. It's going to pop out no, again. No, no, she went right home. She went home. On, okay. So, so that's Friday night. Yeah. So, um, so Saturday I fly to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I, so th that, that would technically be my one night alone in my house. Yeah. And I had a gig. Still, it was fun. It was, I, I can't complain. I right. Flew, I was oh, right. flown to San Francisco. Right, to do that Nero To do the thing, Nero right? gig, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, Michelle Buteau was there. Uh, she's been a comic of the week, right? Um, uh, Maybe. I think so. I, think yeah. so. Man, I just saw her. I heard, uh, she's, she was a Virgil. She was just at the Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And she said hi. Yeah. And so did Paige Hurwitz oh, and cool. uh, K uh, Karen Kilgariff. Oh, my God. Yeah. Jeez, I'm all hide up by all, mm -hmm. the good, all the cool people. You've been hide. Um, and then and Baron Vaughn was there and uh, Matt oh, right. Bronger was there. It was a hell Bronger. of a lineup. Yeah, it was a good lineup. Matt Bronger. Yeah, and, and Kate Baron Willett. And, yeah. I, I had I had a little coffee with Kate Willett. She's so funny. She has mm -hmm. so many. She has really funny jokes. About feminism, um, and such great, yeah, they're really, and they're totally. I, I, I think I've remembered people trying to talk about women talk talking about feminism, but it came off like guys would peel off from a right. joke. No, she's and hers are, jokes. Hers are just really good jokes. Yeah. about a topic that guys don't want to hear about, and she gets them to laugh at it anyway, which is the mark of, of an a, amazing of joke writer. Yeah. yeah, and she's she's hooked me up with a doc. Uh, Doc's, Doc's lab. Doc's lab yeah. on the fifth of December. Oh, that's cool. That's so such she's a great gonna. Run. Yeah. Um, so so uh, that was a fun gig, and then um, I got to stay at the um, the Sir Francis Drake, which is one of San Francisco has a couple of really really old hotels in Mark Hopkins. They're right near Union Square, and uh, I, I'd never stay. I, I just is it, it fancy or is it has it been updated? It's super old and it's kind of fancy. Okay. Um, it, but, it, but it's an it, like, establishment. I was like the night before I wanted out of the business and now I'm at the <laughs> Sir Francis Drake in San Francisco. <laughs> Here's the thing though, like I, I, I can't keep nostalgia is killing me. This feeling like every time I see like every every time I go to the Bay Area, I just remember so many things and and I, I long for them, you know? And I, I'm like, I don't I don't want to feel like this all the time. I yeah. I just want to go and visit and go, wow, this is a beautiful city and see some parts of it I haven't seen. Right. I don't want to feel like, oh, I remember when this happened here and I miss this person and I I wish this person was still alive. I mean not just my dad, you know, comics yeah. and people I haven't seen in a long time. Sure. It's weird. And that, and I was sleeping, you know, my son still sleeps with me and yeah. it drives me nuts. But then I was like, this is, I, I'm already nostalgic for it because once this ends, yeah, it's never going back. Right. Mm -hmm. And we hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please don't sleep with them. I just, I, I don't want to spend the second half of my life longing for the first half. Yeah. Don't do that. You know, don't do it. You have to move forward. And the thing is, is you'll be forced to move forward. 
Because if you end up just wallowing in what used to be mm-hmm. and, and because you, you just – when when I first moved to Los Angeles, the best advice I got was that you have to choose to like it. Right. Because if you didn't want to like it, you could find a shitload not to like. Yeah. You will find and – and, and my friend Craig was like – he's an editor. And he said, when I first moved to Los Angeles, I – I didn't know if I'd like it. I, I, I thought it was dumb. And so I found dumb people to hang out with and I didn't like it. And then he moved back to Minneapolis and then he moved back again. And he said, I decided I was only going to hang out with people I wanted to hang out with that mm-hmm. I liked. Everyone else was just going to be a work friend. And I would see them in a, in a work situation. I wasn't going to invite them to my house. I was just going to live our lives. And I would look for the good things that are about Los Angeles. One of my favorite things about Los Angeles is that it's chock full of lighting directors. So that's really one of your favorite things about Los Angeles. It is so beautiful at night. The way the trees are lit up and the way the flowers are are lit. Oh, I thought you meant actual lighting directors, people oh. that are lighting. <laughs> there were some of my favorite people. I don't know if you've ever. <laughs> What's they're that? just what good you people. Mean? <laughs> no, I mean the, the the way people light their homes oh. and the streets. It's because the place is crawling with people with so much talent. Yeah. That it just bleeds into Absolutely everything. You yeah. know, you're you're getting a you're getting a, a D- designers. A they design everything. Yeah, right, there, yes. there's someone who's designed fucking everything, yeah. and there's there's so much charm. Yeah, that's true. Coming out of just peop- your waiter and your yeah, you know. Well, I I didn't mean I dislike Los Angeles. No, I no. just mean that it's more of a feeling of of uh, I I, I want to be able to go to the Bay Area without. Without feeling that pain. Sort of, I feel yes. like I'm a, a just a bruise. Well, in it, anything it I bump fade. into, it should fade as you as you go. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have nostalgia about my hometown. Yeah, and my sister has none. My sister is like, don't you see what this town needs? Which is a propellant and some sort of match. <laughs> and uh, she hates South Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Mm. And um, well, yeah, uh, you've never been. It's no. very adorable. It is a Norman Rockwell moment. I'm with your sister, and I've never seen it. Exactly. I've been to Walnut Creek, it's uh, or at least Massa, or whatever it's Massa's called. Is, Massa's. That's not Walnut Creek. That's, that, that is entirely Walnut Creek But you know what? It's Walnut, Walnut Creek, Creek to, to you. Me. Yeah, it is Sorry. entirely Walnut Creek to me. Sorry. But I'm sure there's better parts of Walnut Creek. Yeah. What else you got? Um, let's see. I was at the Improv on Tuesday. I mm-hmm. did this uh, the Bay Hilarious show. It's uh, I missed you. Oh, yeah. You were I at the Late Crab Show. Apple. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, uh, it's just fun to see old friends. You know, right, Tom Rhodes. Again, I love Tom Rhodes. There you, know, you go. I've known. Uh, you know, it's. Did like, you miss him when you were in San Francisco? I uh, <laughs> <laughs> shut up! Don't make fun of me. Um, <laughs> Too late. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, I love knowing newer comics, and I, I really love my old friends that mm-hmm. I've known since the '90s. You know, they're so bad. Well, you ought. Well, you are because they're they're anyway. It's just yeah. great to see Tom Rhodes and and Mike Uriga and Scott Silverman. You know Byron Yee. These guys I've no, you know Tony Kameen? No, Tony wasn't there. Okay, just pe- anyone that knows what the Holy City Zoo was and and mm-hmm. knows how it felt to work out there. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a gold. That's a golden person to me. Yep, I got all those guys from the from the early nineties that I love so much. But it's uh, yeah, I love I love the new comics and everything. I was yeah, yeah the. It was fun. I love that crab apple show with Bob and Caitlin. Oh, that's really cool. Bob Cat and Caitlin is just they they get up and they tell just one story after another about weird life choices. Yeah. They both did they had done together that new show for Comedy Central. I don't know if it's streaming. Kyle will. Uh whether it's streaming or if it's on Comedy Central. Ian Abramson's Seven Minutes in Purgatory. Do you think that's gonna be streaming or just real? Streaming just streaming. And mm. um it's essentially you tell your jokes to a camera, and then they, the camera, the the audience is separate from the from the from the comic. Mm. Have you heard about this? Mm-mm. Seven minutes in purgatory, Ian Abramson's <laughs> uh, show, and I like the title now. And it's uh, you do just do your jokes to a camera, and then the audience gets to see you, but it's super uncomfortable. And in this case, I believe they shot it in like the will turn or something. Yeah. So you are performing in a room of 1,200 empty seats. And then they're on the roof or something. Um, w- w- why? Why? Yeah. It's a themed. It's a themed show. Mm-hmm. And uh, regular stand-up shows, I guess, are boring because everybody wrote jokes. Um, I'm uncertain why. 
why. I, no, uh, I but mean, not that I'm unwilling. I'm glad to, I, I, I did it once. I'm, I'm glad anyone got a show on the air. Of course. I don't want to. I, I just I have a personal like. I I don't understand why stand up isn't good enough. Why all the tinkering? <laughs> You know, mm-hmm. we do we do the tinkering, we do the tweaking. Yeah, we do it all the time. So yeah. our jokes are as perfect as possible. You don't have to tweak with the show, the format. Right. Let us do our job, mm-hmm. and you fucking give us a mic and a stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I wanted to do that show, of course, because uh, I'll do any show. And uh, <laughs> and so who books it? Who books it? And it was, um, but they did it. Bobcat and Caitlin did it. As a, as a duo. Oh, interesting. Which I think is w- different. It defeats the purpose of being alone because then they could at least turn to each other. I like that they figured out how to cheat. That's awesome. Yeah. It was, uh, it's much, but they're, they're such a delight together. They make me laugh. Um, that thing that you emailed me that you were angry about and I also got enraged at. Could have been anything. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> Write it down in big letters. <laughs> and uh, what is it? Oh Jesus! Yes, I forgot about can that. We, can we talk about this cryptically? Yeah, let's talk. Let's do it. Let's uh, let's talk about how some comics have giant egos. And is that it? I think that's what it is because you know how you'll meet a this this used to. Yeah, you want to describe it or or <laughs> well because because I was going to start further back to really bury the story because it just you know how like when you first start doing stand up there's there's usually a dude who's like well, I got forty five minutes I got forty five and you're like you have fifteen minutes right and so that guy gets to headline before me because he has no sense of uh, perspective and and bookers automatically believe male comics first and and mo- then if you're a woman if you're a female comic who has an hour they still think you only have thirty. Right. And 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 this is an unsubstantiated poll, but one that I have definitely taken uh, just by looking is that most women don't lie about how much time they've right, got. Right, right, right. Down it's, to the minute. I've got 27 and a half, but I got, I'm working on a new tag. It'll take it up to 2743. Right. I could probably sh- just kind of do some tap dancing or something for that extra two to make sure I do my 30. Yeah. And and but there were dudes who were like that. And there are other comics who think that they're geniuses true from the get yep. and then they compare themselves to people that are established <laughs> they compare themselves to people and i not us by the way this isn't someone comparing themselves to us oh my god no no yeah i don't think we're angry I, for somebody else for somebody else it was just like i am an alive version of richard pryor that's what i mean that would be what like if i pick if i said well i if somebody else says it it's okay. Oh, well, what the person, the person said, I'm a young version of so and so, right? And so and so is an established comedian who, who is, is still working, still first young, of all, and st- right, and right. Well, and not dead. And and you know, and like you, you don't have to participate in the in the d- industry's desire to replace women over forty <laughs> with new ones, right? You know, like yeah, it's hard enough. Don't. And yes. you're going to be one of those women too one day. So don't don't do it. Right, don't do it. But but it, so so the this comic has had described themselves yes. that way yes. to industry. Yes. <laughs> to get a manager, to get an agent. And it worked. And it totally worked. And then the manager oh. and agent repeated it and that's when I thought that um, the comic had not said it. You thought the manager said it. I thought the and manager said it. that was annoying it. enough. It was annoying enough. And I was like, ew. But when the comic had pitched themselves as that. that- then I was like, well, oh, I despise you. You yeah. are you are an egomaniacal yeah. banana head. Fuck, um, fuck that bullshit. Yeah. And I and I would just like to say, if anyone out there thinks they're a young Lori Kilmartin <laughs> and I hear about it. I will fucking destroy you. <laughs> you know, I will be, find out. Be a dead young. I will. F- <laughs> I will find out a show you're on, and I will go up in front of you, and I will murder. <laughs> and the uh, and I will go over my time, Ooh. and I will make the audience love me. I will do all my old tricks. Mm-hmm, I know. I mm-hmm. I've got tricks I don't use. That's it. Okay. That's I know right. how to use them, but That's I don't right. use them because you've been using your powers for good. You will use <laughs> your powers, right. but I'll to use bury it for bury this yes. person. Yeah. That's right. Enough. Yeah, but I said because I like we were talking about um, Stuart Lee. 
couple episodes yeah. ago. And I said that he was like uh, Andy Kindler and, and Bill Hicks if yeah. they were together. Yeah, yeah. That's something where someone else has said it and both – and, and it's not demeaning and, to either right, Bill Hicks saying, or Andy Kindler. Right. It, it's not that that guy's going to replace Andy Kindler or yeah. that you shouldn't see Andy Kindler. They're all three are complimented though. Yeah. In in that situation, but the fact is I think I think everyone knows that I'm a I'm a a young Lenny Bruce. So, uh, <laughs> that's my that's my dream. Yeah, that was so, that was kind of irritating. It is irritating. How was, much time have we done? I was talking to somebody. 53. Hey, oh, we didn't do we didn't do a uh, comic of the week. Oh, that's right. All right, you know what happened? What? She SNL. Yeah, our comic of the week. We talked about her before she got SNL. Melissa but, Via Senor. Yes. Woo! Super funny, Melissa Via Senor. She Villasenor. will be on SNL next season. Next She's season. A really great impressionist. There, you know, um, and her Snapchat is all hilarious. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just because of the face filters. Yeah. It'll just let her be any face. And so she writes to that. Yeah. She writes to the filters. It's, it's very, awesome. It, there aren't a lot of good impressionists anymore. You know, right? It's, Rich it's Little's quite, probably still working somewhere. But, he probably uh, is. It's a, <laughs> it's it's a kind of a rare skill because mm-hmm. it's it's not one that's easy to do on stage because it's sort of frowned upon a little bit. You know, right? Like, of of to do famous people. Yeah, like when, yeah. when you and I were coming up, everyone had a Jack Nicholson impression. Right, and it, and then it just became super hacky. So and hacky. then you just go, no, you don't do that anymore. You have to pick, come from your own authentic self. Right, do your mom. Yeah, and do right. your dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. that's where the impressions would be. It's like I'm talking uh, about my neighbor. Yes. I'm talking about it's a, a character you make up. Yeah, so she's like she does. Real... She does both of those. Yeah, she does both. Yeah. So yeah. that's uh, Melissa Via Senor. It's, it's pretty cool. Which has got to be at Melissa Via Senor on Twitter and all V i l l a s e n o r. Correct. Yep, that okay. is correct. And she with the tilde over the end. Yep. And uh, how much time is that? Did you say fifty three? You got five more minutes. Uh, how about I can't believe that only just... took two minutes. I have uh, this tale is a friend of mine are married now for five years. Right. And I said, oh, congratulations. They had a destination wedding, which yeah. I don't usually approve of. Um, but it was in Australia. Mm-hmm. And I picked up a set uh, to so that I could write off the, mm-hmm. the trip. Mm-hmm. And I had it all planned. <laughs> and then the set was the night of their wedding. <laughs> so I had to email my buddy Greg, who I've known since '93 and is yeah. a really good friend of mine. And I was like, "So you guys are getting married in the afternoon, right? I mean, how long's the how long's the reception gonna go?" And I said, "If I if I if I had to set it like eight o'clock, <laughs> would you hate me?" And he goes, "No." No, that actually makes me laugh so hard, and it makes me feel like a comic. So uh-huh. uh, you do it, and so um, okay. Probably the one of the biggest fights I had with an ex boyfriend yeah. was uh, I went to his best friend's wedding and it was again it's like two three o'clock in the afternoon yeah I had afternoon a spot at wedding. the improv okay yeah it's fucking improv man it's over yeah the wedding's over I'm you like, were there and, for the plus, wedding I don't know any of these people I can't spend hours with people I don't know <laughs> right. you know. <laughs> I'm like to me. I'm like, thank God, I have a, I, I have an exit. It, there's a countdown. You know, I got to right. leave at seven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was a huge fight to go spend hours with people you don't know. Yeah, that That's was the guy went. that you that said you spend your life in a bar, and I realized it was true. Even it is I, true. I don't drink. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well. And what did we accomplish in this podcast? Well, I think Besides we've established some slamming some... somebody without using their name. You know who you are. Stop doing it. Stop <laughs> riding the coattail of so just write your own material and be your own comic. Damn. For the love of Christ, be your own comic. Whoa. Don't you think? Of course. <laughs> there there's always you know, when you start you're you're always emulating somebody, but you yes. don't want to be. You kinda no. want to shed that. That's like a skin you you know, you shed. Yeah. You wanna get out of that so you're your You own learn self. that within the first two years. Yeah. You learn that you, you don't steal and you you don't steal material mm-hmm. and you try not to have the timing of your favorite comic. Well, for a while, you're not going to know you have their timing. You right. know, you, you just have their voice in your head so much. It starts to feel like your own voice. Right. You know, and then hopefully you separate from that person because all of a sudden you don't see them. You're doing open mics all the time or something. And then you start to develop your own thing. But yeah. you're constantly picking up other people's vibe rhythms mm-hmm. and um cadences and stuff like that that's pretty normal it's true 
It's true. Be well, this is a good it. one. You want to do another one? Oh. <laughs> All right. Bye. Now leaving Nerdist.com. Thank <laughs> you.